5 p.m. recap. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Monday, June 7, 2021. Al Jazeera report. Russia imposes tit-for-tat sanctions on Canadians. Russia has announced tit-for-tat sanctions against nine senior Canadian officials, including the Justice Minister, following similar measures from Canada over the treatment of Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny. The Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement on Monday that the nine Canadians had been banned from entering Russia, for an undetermined period. The banned Canadians include Justice Minister David Lametti, Prisons Chief Anne Kelly, and Scott Bishop, Commander of the Canadian Forces Intelligence Command. Fox Report Idaho Prosecutor Withdraws Contest of Cult Mom, Lori Vallow's Competency Idaho Special Prosecutor Rob Wood has withdrawn his contest to the competency of Lori Vallow Dable in her murder trial. Wood submitted his contestation Friday after a psychologist examined Dable, 47, and declared her not competent for trial. The judge needed to still legally declare Dable's competency, and court proceedings were temporarily halted. However, Wood withdrew his contest on Monday, a court document show. BBC Report Germany to ship army beer home from Afghanistan. Commanders had recently banned soldiers from drinking amid growing violence in Afghanistan ahead of the withdrawal. Local forces were unable to sell the alcohol due to religious and cultural differences in Afghanistan. A defense ministry spokeswoman said on Monday that they had found a civilian contractor to repatriate the drinks. In April, U.S. President Joe Biden announced that all its forces would withdraw from Afghanistan on the 11th of September 2021. CNN report. Why electric cars are so much heavier than regular cars. Batteries are heavy. That's why, generally, electric cars weigh considerably more than otherwise similar gasoline-powered vehicles. Take the GMC Hummer EV, for instance. The Edition 1 version, which has lots of batteries for additional driving range and power, weighs over 9,000 pounds. That's roughly three times the weight of a Honda Civic. That has important implications for safety. But it's more complicated than the traditional thinking that revolves around issues of mass and speed. CNN report. In controversial decision, FDA approves first new Alzheimer's disease drug in nearly 20 years. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration on Monday approved the use of the experimental drug aducanumab for early phases of Alzheimer's disease, despite an FDA advisory committee concluding last year that there is not enough evidence to support the effectiveness of the treatment. The drug was developed for patients with mild cognitive impairment, not severe dementia, and intended to slow progression of Alzheimer's disease, not just ease symptoms. CNN report. David Dushman, last surviving liberator of Auschwitz, dies at 98. David Dushman, the last surviving soldier who helped liberate Auschwitz-Birkenau, died on Saturday at the age of 98, the Jewish community of Munich and Upper Bavaria said in a statement on its website. Dushman helped free prisoners from the notorious Nazi concentration camp as a soldier for the Soviet Red Army in World War II. The president of the local Jewish community, Charlotte Knobloch, called Dushman the hero of Auschwitz, and said in a statement that he saved countless lives. Al Jazeera report. U.S. recovers most of $4.4 million crypto ransom paid by Colonial Pipeline. The U.S has recovered the majority of the $4.4 million in cryptocurrency ransom paid to the perpetrators of the cyber attack on Colonial Pipeline Co. last month that temporarily halted fuel supplies across the U.S. East Coast, Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco said. Ransomware attacks are always unacceptable but when they target critical infrastructure we will spare no effort in our response, Monaco told reporters on Monday. Fox report. Portland shooting in suburban neighborhood leaves four dead police. Four people were killed Sunday in a shooting in a suburban neighborhood of southeastern Portland, police said. Officers responded to a call from a residence in the 4000 block of southeast Boise Street, around 25 minutes past 10 p.m. When they arrived at the home, police said the officers found four people deceased from apparent gunshot wounds. Portland police homicide detectives were called to the scene and are investigating the case. BBC report. What is Kamala Harris doing on her first foreign visit? Ms. Harris will meet the President of Guatemala on Monday in Mexico's later this week. Ms. Harris has described her task as finding solutions to address the root causes of the border crisis. 
Her staff says this first visit is primarily an information gathering trip. She is also expected to meet with local business and community leaders as she looks to tackle underlying problems in the region, including corruption and the lack of economic opportunities. Fox Report Tokyo Olympics fiasco Many in Japan say games will continue despite widespread opposition. Although still weeks away, the Olympics are approaching with remarkable speed, and yet Japan remains mired in the coronavirus crisis. A poll by Yomiuri Daily Newspaper Monday showed that half of Japan thinks the games will go on as planned, despite escalating opposition. More than half of Japanese citizens, 60%, have called for a delay or cancellation of the games, and over 10,000 volunteers have dropped out due to COVID concerns. Al Jazeera report. IAEA urges Iran to provide information on uranium traces at sites. Iran has failed to answer questions about the discovery of uranium particles at former undeclared sites in the country, the head of the UN nuclear watchdog has said, calling on Tehran to provide information, without further delay. Rafael Grossi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, has been pushing Iran for answers on three sites dating back many years where inspections had revealed traces of uranium of man-made origin, suggesting they were once connected to Iran's nuclear program. Deutsche Well Report Modi announces federal takeover of India's vaccination program. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, speaking in a televised national address on Monday, declared that the federal government would once again be taking control of the country's coronavirus vaccination program and offering free vaccinations to all adults in the country. All those above 18 will get free vaccinations, Modi said, announcing that the program will start on June 21, whether it is the poor, the lower middle class, the middle class, or the upper middle class, under the federal government program, everyone will get free vaccines. Deutsche Well Report. Italy. Police dismantle anti-Semitic neo-Nazi group planning NATO facility attack. Italian police announced on Monday they had broken up an online neo-Nazi group dedicated to anti-Semitic and racist propaganda that encouraged young people to carry out extreme acts of violence against Jews and foreigners. Italian postal police and Carabinieri paramilitary police said individuals aged between 26 and 62 were allegedly involved in the group. Twelve people were present on Facebook and Russian social network VK under the name, Ordine Ario Romano, which is believed to be a reference to the racist writings of fascist author Giulia Savola, a Carabinieri police statement said. Fox Report Putin signs law ending Russia's Open Skies Treaty with the U.S. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Monday signed a law to officially end the country's Open Skies Treaty with the U.S. less than two weeks before his meeting with President Biden in Geneva. Last month, the Biden administration told Russia that it had no plans to rejoin the arms control pact that was abandoned during the Trump administration. Biden, the candidate, called Trump's move short-sighted. Deutsche Well Report EU auditors say Frontex border agency failing to fulfill its duties. European Union auditors slammed the bloc's border agency on Monday, saying it is so overstretched in terms of resources that it is unable to fulfill its duties. Governments look to Frontex after the 2015 refugee crisis to stem the flow of migrants into Europe. The Warsaw-based agency has close to 10,000 officers and a budget that is set to rise to 900 million euros, 1 billion dollars, by 2027, up from just 19 million euros in 2006. BBC report. Afghan policewomen abuse, US and EU urge inquiry. It follows a BBC investigation which revealed female officers faced widespread abuse by their colleagues. A number of women told the BBC they were too scared to report the attacks, which were often by their superiors. The Afghan government says it is committed to change, but rights groups say perpetrators are rarely punished. Afghan women who choose to serve their country as police officers are courageous patriots. Ambassador Ross Wilson, the U.S. Charged Affairs to Afghanistan, said in a statement. CNN report. Norwegian police identify body of toddler who died crossing the English Channel. The body of a toddler that washed up on Karmoy Island earlier this year has been identified by Norwegian police as that of Artan Aranazad from Iran, who was previously listed as missing after his family attempted to cross the English Channel by boat in October 2020. It is now positive that the boy who was found is Artan Aranazad. He is of Iranian origin and disappeared during a shipwreck in the English Channel off the coast of France on October 27, last year, 
Southwestern Police Lead Investigator Camilla T. L. Waj said in a statement on Monday. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell.